Hello everybody, Scott Golden here with Golden Opportunities Coaching. Welcome to those of you who are new, welcome back to those of you who are seasoned veterans and what we do around here. What we do around here is we bring spiritual and emotional and coaching related topics to the forefront. We have uh, conversations and dialogues about them and if you would like a, a certain topic covered, please feel free to uh, comment below and I can usually do that within a couple of days. Like, subscribe, comment, all that good stuff. Today we're going to talk about the dangers of living in the past or living with regret. And there's about, uh, let's see, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven or so things that I want to I want to discuss with that. And obviously people know that living in the past is is a problem, but they don't necessarily understand why, right? So and and so let's just go through that. Number one, when you live in the past, you hold grudges. The the concept that we can go back and change things, that we can, if this hadn't happened, if this person had treated me right, if this person had um, just loved me the way I needed to be loved, if my mom had been this or my dad had been that, and then grudges cause us to have a negative worldview and often a negative self-view, and that becomes problematic because it's hard to make positive progress when having negative worldviews. So while grudges are normal to hold for a short length of time, in other words, when we're grieving something, to be upset by a unfortunate event is completely within the realm of normalcy. To hold grudges and remain stuck on them in the past is to hinder yourself to and miss, potentially, positive alternatives to why things happen. That's why retelling yourself a different story about what happened, not denying the truth of it, but giving it a different meaning, giving it a different impact on your life, what it could mean to, to be used for good. Uh, and I can say this as a child abuse survivor. Uh, I, I now understand that part of my life journey was to go through those experiences, which I wouldn't wish on anyone. And if you're struggling with being abused, either as a child or as an adult, my heart goes out to you. But had I not gone through those experiences, I wouldn't be able to coach folks who have been through them themselves at the level I can because I wouldn't I, I would have textbook knowledge, but not personal knowledge. And sometimes personal knowledge of hardships gives us higher levels of empathy and compassion. And so there can always be a way to turn a negative into a positive but the beginning of that is turning a negative into a neutral, that it doesn't have power over me anymore, and then shifting a neutral to a positive. Okay, now that I realize it doesn't have power over me anymore, what else good could come from this thing? So there's that. The second one is self-hatred. Self-hatred is likely to be ostracized and amplified through uh, living in the past because we live within the regret of the things we didn't do, the chances we didn't take, the relationships we didn't pursue, the opportunities we didn't get. And then we blame ourselves because blaming when we're done blaming other people, all we have to deal with on a day-to-day -day basis is ourselves, right? At the end of the day, the reality of it is we, we human beings look to blame rather than take personal responsibility much of the time because taking personal responsibility for unfortunate circumstances can be very difficult. And sometimes circumstances happen, not randomly, but without understanding of the why until months or years later. And so we try to rationalize through the act of blame, either of ourselves or others, and self-hate comes from self-blame becoming an obsession which is never going to lead in a positive direction. If you hate yourself and don't see yourself in a positive light, it's hard to make progress from that place. And so that's why self-hate becomes such a deterrent to people moving forward. And so that is, is dangerous. The next one is nostalgia. Now, looking back at, at a positive time in our lives or something that's fun or exciting or, or what we believe is the best part of our life can be fun. It can be an enjoyable experience. However, when we focus on that too much and too greatly, what begins to happen is that we inevitably believe that the good old days were better than where we are now. And I, I love the Billy Joel song that says the good old days weren't always good and tomorrow ain't as bad as it seems because that's truly where it is. 
the times that we think are good now, we were still going through hardship. We were still going through insecurity. We were still going through, you know, doubt and, and, and personal questioning and all that stuff. We just look back on it because we survived it and we think we weren't going through those things at all. It's a self-deception that makes nostalgia uh, somewhat dangerous. So let me go into what I call the ofs. Could have or, or, or the haves. The ofs or the haves, depending on your pronunciation. Could have, would have, should have, might have. Or could have, should have, would have, might have. So it's kind of like saying, well, if I had been born in um, New York City, I could have gone to um, dinner at a New York pizzeria. Well, I wasn't, so it doesn't matter. Could have, would have, should have is all conjectured that if a circumstance that never had a chance of happening because it wasn't in the right alignment for your own growth or progress or you were on the other side of the world or you weren't in an opportunity to take advantage of, of that potential, it, the, the belief is that, well, if we focus on what could have, would have, should have been, then our life would have turned out differently. Maybe, maybe not, because the actions we take in every moment are determined by our knowledge, and we would have had completely different knowledge if we took a different track in life. So the could have, would have, should have um, is, is, is dangerous. So the next one is people who struggle with living in the past. It's hard for them to find future hope when your mindset is past motivated. It's like, well, we either look at the nostalgia, it'll never be that good again, or we look at the mistakes, I'll never be good enough to make any progress. So it's hard to create future hope when we're living in the past. Living in the future is just as dangerous, however, because the f living for the future assumes that things have to turn out a certain way in order for us to be happy, in order for us to be healthy, in order for us to be satisfied with life. And if the things that don't go exactly according to the way we plan never come about, then we, again, will put ourselves back into self-hate, self-hate, self-loathing, frustration, sadness, and all sorts of negative emotions on the basis that we, d we failed again, and that creates the loop all over again. The final thing in this particular audio is when, when we live in the past, there's no new reason. There's no reason or impetus behind making new goals. And if there's no goals, you'll get up and you'll live kind of like a robot. Meep 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 must go to work. Meep 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 must deal with spouse. Meep 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 must pay bills. And you'll lose all the joy and the excitement in your life because now you're living to exist rather than existing to live. Every day is a cornucopia of unlimited potential and possibilities. And in the place that it is a, a, an opportunity and nothing more, nothing less, the, cha the choices we make and the chances we take will shape our future every single day, which means being present moment minded is necessary. But we can't be in the past and the present at the same time. So there has to be an active decision made about where we want to be. So hopefully this has been helpful to you, and I encourage you to keep your feet on the ground, your mind in the moment. Until